Welcome to Chateau Storytime. I thought we'd take this Wednesday to kind of go through all the story and history of the chateau um, that I know. I am Amadeus. And I'm renovating a 13th century chateau. To be all honest with you, it's just a house. And you're watching my vlog about my new life in France. Good morning, we just got up and now I'm getting ready to go for a walk with Aniti Tea. It's a bit cold outside. Probably I'm overdoing it with this jacket and the pullover, but I feel a bit like I don't want to freeze. <laughs> That's it. So, um, yeah, today I have a meeting um, concerning everything artist or artist auteur, which is the artistic side of my life. I mean, choreographer and dancer, right? So um, I'm having a meeting concerning that with a friend of mine who also just recently moved to um, France, to Paris. So we're kind of comparing notes and kind of trying to do our research together. Joint forces always works better. And um, then we need to go shopping to La Rochefoucauld. And then I think I have a few minor things that I want to do in the bedroom upstairs, in the green room. And uh, yes, you see there's tons and tons and tons of things to do. successful. I didn't buy more flowers. As you could see, I was just looking at them. And now I just finished setting up a substack, reading about it, watching a few videos about that, because that, that was my mission for today, to learn about that and to set it up and to set my newsletter up through Substack. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below. And uh, Substack is a writing app. I want to delve into writing a bit and trying to like have a bit other kind of thoughts and things uh, addressed over there, more about my feelings and about my um, experiences as well here at the Chateau and in the French uh, countryside and also just like living with the seasons and everything. So if you're interested in that, check out my Substack. I would like to talk you through the history of the Chateau actually. So um, give me a moment. There's plenty of history that I don't know and actually my boyfriend's um, uncles have been researching this place's history for a really long time and it's really hard to come by with any kind of information actually because first of all we're in a really really tiny village. So Les Ignac du Rond, just to give you an impression, is in the Charente Limousine which is the most eastern corner of the Charente. We're touching up on Haute-Vienne, so that means we're between Angoulême and Limoges. We're not in a very popular area, in a very rural area, and one might ask oneself, why is there even a chateau here? And I do understand that, because it's just like, it just doesn't make sense. Although France is full of chateaus and it's the one place that has the highest chateau or castle density in all of the world. But still, it's kind of a random place for a chateau. It was never a big residency place. I mean, we're not very far from the Chateau de Massignac, which was an uh, old domaine. And nowadays it's the Domaine des Etains a five-star hotel in which, fun fact actually, uh, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt back then got married and spent almost all of their holidays here, just around the corner. <laughs> and this hotel makes anything possible. It's just absolutely mind-blowing. It's beautifully restored. They done a, it's, it's a proper five-star hotel experience. It does come with a price tag, the standard room I think it's about 500 euros a night. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but getting back to the to this place, it was never really known for aristocracy to be here. Um, so nobody really knows for sure 
who built this place? It is for sure, and it is recorded, that it, this place burned down twice, as far as I know. Maybe, maybe we'll find out more and maybe somebody else will join in and be like, oh, no, you're wrong. So all of this is basically only of all the stories that I heard that people tell, told me about this place. So this place was, I think it started, that's what I've been told, it started in the 13th century. That's its origins. And um, there is a sigil on the back place that says something about... 1500 and it has a family sigil on it. I just recently discovered it because a small introduction into how this chateau is built up. Uh, you have basically the structures of the old chateau. So you have barns, you have um, quarters and you have the main chateau building which was at one point split into three parts. Mind-blowing, right? And nobody knows yet again how it got split up, why it got split up, by whom it got split up. So none of this, none, there's no documents that are left. And you have to, you have to think about that um, also during the French Revolution, a lot of documents have been destroyed, first of all. That was in the late 1700s. And then in the Second World War, in the end of 30s, 40s, beginning of 40s, this area was very well known for the resistance. So the people who were up against the Nazis. So that's why some gruesome stuff happened here with villages being burned down, people locked in their houses, the Nazis burning down all villages with inhabitants inside. It was just like absolutely horrendously horrible. So also during that time, a lot of documents got lost. What we do know is that the, all the woodwork is from the 1700s because that's kind of around that time where it burned down. And judging from the size of those beams, I mean, it's just like incredible if you think about it. All in all, there's four beams on every level that are this size. First floor and ground floor, eight beams. That must have been eight humongous trees that had been already centuries old, if you think about it. It's just absolutely mind-blowing. So the chateau, as I said, is uh, separated into three units. I have one unit and I call it Le Demi Chateau. And actually it's not even a real half because I even have neighbors in the back. There's a sliver of the chateau, which is basically one room wide. It's, it's really a small house actually, which belongs to someone else. These people are rarely, rarely here. Um, they use it as a holiday home. I have never really met them actually. And then there's my neighbors on the side who own kind of the biggest half of it because they have all the half going through. I think my half is a bit wider than theirs and their half looks and feels different to this because they've also, they have a different style than me, obviously. And they also have many more medieval, really medieval features in there. Their windows are really tiny. I also don't know how, how all this happened that the windows got turned into something so big. Very rare that you see medieval places with such huge windows. My windows have a span of 1 meter 40 and a height of 1 meter 80. There's so many question marks around it, you know? It's just so, so crazy. But my boyfriend actually gave me some old photos and I'm gonna give you some impressions of those photos. So these are the three photos that my boyfriend has found. And this photo shows the side of the chateau. You can see on the left hand side, as I'm marking out here, that's the church. And then you have the main building with its two little turrets. And there's a closed up window here. And I don't think that window still exists with my neighbors. And they have this tiny little window here and they did add at one point, and I think that wasn't them, but somebody else, 
added a tiny window here. As you can see, a very medieval structure. So not much going on here, not many windows, very, very dark. It's um, very different to this half. That half is quite dark. It's quite a lot of small kind of rooms. It's not very big rooms, just the upstairs, the second floor, they don't have any walls. So this upstairs, the second floor, which is my guest floor, is a huge open space. And you can see this is my open barn. And this here is a barn building that I don't think even still exists now. Then, I mean, these photos don't have like the best quality, but as you can see, that's the back of it. Basically, we've, saw, we've seen this side here, and now we're going to the back. And you see this half, this little bit, that belongs to somebody else. That doesn't belong to me. And this is my neighbors. And basically, behind that is where I am sitting right now. And then there's still this photo of my neighbor's half where you can see my, this is my um, corridor window. This is my door that's going to be replaced at one point. And this is the entrance to my neighbor's place and their bedroom window. And this all still exists. Just this building and the side, it doesn't exist anymore. Their garden looks totally different now. Um, but yeah, you can see it has changed a lot throughout the years. So yeah, that was just to give you an example of how, how this place has changed. And I also know that people before me had this place as a holiday home. And they, I'm not sure if they did a lot of renovations or they bought it from other people who did a lot of renovations on the place. It's a bit like... I'm not really sure. I have a photo album of how they kind of, rest not really restored, but actually like did everything in here. Because before then, when um, my boyfriend was still a kid, so around the 80s, 90s, also the late 50s, as far as people can remember, old people also here in the village, this has been a very filthy place. The chateau has not been a chateau as we would know it today and as we would classify it today but actually it has been like a really really filthy place there were people living with animals really really poor people who were living here with their animals just on the ground floor there was no real up upper floor i don't think there was there was a second floor as far as i heard um the first floor was really just like to pull up a ladder, go, go on top of it and maybe sleep, to not sleep with the animals. That's how you used to live, you know, you just pulled up a ladder. And so robbers and people who might harm you wouldn't, wouldn't come and, and do anything about it because you were securely in the upstairs. But uh, yeah, there was, there was no staircases. That's why the staircases here are quite modern. Um, it's a bit of a pity to not have very original, original features, you know, except basically the outer walls and the woodwork, the wooden beams and everything, which you can see the wooden beams are carved and they're, they're already, it already speaks of money. So somebody who had built this place, they had to have a lot, a lot of money. There's a thing about a sir who came from Angoulême and who built this place, apparently. And um, at one point his daughter lived here, but um, she died here and she was also some kind of aristocracy. But these are stories that are not really confirmed. And actually, like last time I talked to my uh, to my boyfriend's uncle, one of them, he actually pointed out that he has some news for me. So maybe at one point uh, we'll sit down together and um, he can tell me all about it and then I'll tell you all about it as soon as I know something else. But yeah, I can also show you some of the pictures of the village, how it used to look like, because this place was actually quite lively. So I do have a few 
um, postcards here that I wanted to share with you. And the first one is actually the Avenue de Massignac, which is basically the old road leading to Massignac, which would basically go down at the side here of the chateau down to the lake. But the lakes were done in the 90s. So basically this would go to the next village, which is Massignac. So you can see that's the corner and that's the way we go past to go down to the chateau from the village. That is the village center basically with the, with the house of my boyfriend. And the bar is here now. And that's the road that leads up to the next village that's called Suri. And now you go this way to Massignac and this way to La Rochefoucauld. I think that's the same one and yes that's basically if you would turn around the corner from here you would get here that's this corner and this is the road that leads up to Muzo and this is the road we take with Anita for example always for walks when we go um, up through the fields when I film that's usually like the road I take up there or to go to Muzo to go to La Rochefoucauld and Angoulême and that's the same road going the other way, basically. So looking the other way. And you could see this village was quite lively. And there were quite a lot of people, a lot of kids, um, more girls than boys at one point, obviously because of the world wars. Um, but yeah, there was always plenty of people living here. It is like rural areas everywhere in the world. They were much more populated before. But I do think that we're, we're kind of on the verge of like bringing new people in and actually establishing something worthwhile also living in rural areas now. So yeah, just wanted to give you a small impressions of the few pictures I actually have. And um, yeah, now I think I want to clean the windows upstairs um, because I have the big ladder up there. So I'm going to take you up. Okay, we're upstairs. <laughs> Sank down deeper. I've got all my cleaning stuff in there. So let's pull this out and let's try to see. I don't know what's going on with me, but I literally just had a problem saying cleaning cloth. <laughs> it's odd. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, let's get those windows cleaned in here. You know, when you have a place like mine, and I mean, I don't even have like huge shuttle. There's always something to do. It's like you uncover all the time. You're like, oh gosh, this is the next project. This is the next project. And it's not even that you thought about the next project, but it's just like, it just gets handed to you basically by the place itself. But at least now the windows are clean. I'm keeping the ladder up here in case something else happens, I don't know, sometimes you just have it in your gut that you might need a ladder out there. I just cleaned some of the surfaces and um, yeah, I think now I just want to squeeze in a bit of a workout because I really wasn't feeling well yesterday. I woke up, I was really, really dizzy. I actually planned to ha start recording yesterday, but I felt so ill and so bad. I don't know what happened. I was r really, literally all day. I was so dizzy, so I just went back to bed and I gave myself a rest. I closed all the bookings for this week because I felt so drained and so, I don't know, I think I've just been going full steam ahead and I think I just need to calm down a bit. And I know it's really hard for, my, for me, so um, yeah, oh well. Got to try, so that's why I want to do a workout. Nothing like crazy, just lifting some weights and um, then I think I just want to concentrate on cooking. <laughs> Managed to do my workout and um, now getting dressed. Just took a shower and my boyfriend's coming down to help me um, carry up the shopping because we have parts of the shopping that goes up because we'll, we'll be cooking partially up, up there and partially here. So we've got to spread out our shopping between the two places. Look at Aniti chilling on her little couch. Ça va, ma belle? The tulips are still in full bloom. So nice, isn't it? 
I was also thinking of changing up the downstairs a bit for the guest season and maybe switching some things around. I have been toying already with switching the couches because, um, yeah, I just don't like the setup so much of the couches. But I think maybe if we put one couch in front of the fireplace and the other one on the side, it could be quite cute. And please do not mind the covers that are there for the doggies. And also I need to put down all the cushions because otherwise the dogs make, make a huge mess. I will have to pull, pull down all the covers and wash also all the covers um, once Anita is back in Dusseldorf because she will be going back to her other dad for a few months for sure, as long as I'm having my main guest season going on here. And she hasn't been there for a quite a bit. I think she came in January, so I've had her already for four months. So and we're kind of trying to split in between. But yeah, I saw that the community grew quite a bit throughout the last days. I'm really, really excited to have all of you on board with me and to follow along my life here in France. And I hope we'll have lots of fun together. And yes, all that's left to say is à bientôt et au revoir. I shall see you back again on Sunday with another video. And um, until then, bisous from the southwest of France. Bye!